Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Pony Podcast. We are very excited that this episode is brought to you with the sponsorship of Rider Focus Physiotherapy. Uh, Rider Focus Physiotherapy is a practice based in Hampshire and they specialise in treating horse riders. They've got riders like Alice Oppenheimer and Charlotte Desjardins amongst their clients. It's run by the lovely Hannah Gasden, who's a three-star event rider, so she knows exactly what sort of problems you're going to have as a rider and also what you want. So she's not going to tell you not to do anything for three days because she knows you're going to muck out your horse. (laughs) Um, We are so, so grateful for all of Hannah's support because we are riders and very broken and it's saving us money (laughs) and time because she's fitting in so well with our schedules. Um, They don't have a specific clinic, they run little clinics all over Hampshire and Surrey at different yards, so there might be one nearby to you. And they also run rider assessments, so they can see you ride and then do a bit of work on you, and use some exciting techniques with you on the horse to get your posture better and also to improve how effective you are on the horse. They also run rider Pilates sessions and simulator sessions using the mechanical horse at Sparshalt College. So if you wanna find out more about their sessions and you wanna go yourself, head to their website at riderfocusphysiotherapy.co.uk. And also you can find them on Facebook and Instagram and they're just Rider Focus Physiotherapy. Hope you guys enjoy. Do you, do you want to introduce the show? Uh, well, it's your contacts, so you can introduce. I feel like most of them are my contacts. <laughs> you think, like, it's your turn to introduce. Well, I can introduce if you want. No, it's okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pony Podcast. Today, we're here with Sam Roberts, who is a show rider. <laughs> She's been winning Mountain and Moorland classes since she was nine and um, has had a fantastic career so far with her best year being um, 2012, when she qualified 14 horses for Hoys, or 14 horses for the Royal International, 12 for Hoys and four for Olympia. And I think you had like 10 wins over those horses. How did you, did we, were those competitions just like mad, like running around everywhere all the time? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How many grooves did you take? Not enough. <laughs> I, I never take enough. Oh God. <laughs> we are always short of people, which is mm. a bit funny. And so yeah. I, I regularly, Go to Lincoln or mm. Cheshire. I went to Cheshire this year with three by myself. Just trundle off. <laughs> oh, I often can go you, everywhere. Can you talk to some eventers? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, but they have to do change like three changes yeah. attack and yeah, Tim, right. Sorry, to be fair, we went to Boomerang mm. and Tim Price rocked up next to us with one horse to go cross country schooling and we were like you not got any grooms and he was like no they were really short staffed on the yard so i didn't feel like i could take anyone off when I actually on my own. the prices yeah. are the only people who i've ever seen turn up to a show jumping warm-up with no grooms both of them just mm. i think they must have just had one girl and she was busy tacking up and unchecking so or they had two two girls one for each of them and yeah i did i was there with harry and i did polls for both of them because I was like, well, um, Harry's left me here. Because <laughs> he'd gone off to get another horse and he'd been like, just stay there. His head girl was doing the rest of it. And so I was like, well, I've got nothing to do. So <laughs> you've not got anyone. I'll do polls for you. Why not? Yeah, no, I regularly don't. Why not? I went, always, not this year, last year. Maybe it's the year before. It was the year before. Mm. <laughs> when I won and I was by myself. <laughs> I was like, yay, go me. <laughs> 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 <Don't wanna hear>. <laughs> <laughs> you know like and everybody goes yeah well done and i'm like oh that on me <laughs> but there's no one to like do you not need someone to like polish your boots just before you go in or something uh, so, it would be ideal but <laughs> <laughs> not, ne- not necessary not, it's not a necessary op- <laughs> situation no do it before you get on and then you'll be fine <laughs> yeah so when did you start riding and what was it that drew you to showing I started probably like a lot of kids when I was really, really super tiny, sort of like three or four. Um, my mum used to be um, a head groom for Lucinda Green. She worked for Robert Oliver. So she was really, really horsey herself. Um, and she invented as well. Um, and so just like every, like a lot of kids, you know, you look up to your mum and she does horses and you do the ponies. And, and it grew from there. Um, I was in pony club and I competed at pony club up to I was about 12 or 13. Um, but I, you know, within the pony, you go to these little shows and bits yeah. and pieces like that. But it's, it started to get quite serious when I was about seven or eight. I got got a bit into it. And mm. It's a bit like any sport; it's quite addictive. Once you yeah. start, you want to get better, and when mm-hmm. you, you win that show, you want to win the next show, mm. and you know, and it sort of grew from there. Um, but I, I took it really seriously when I was about nine. I got asked to ride for some people, 
um, and took up mm. a ride and picked up the ride in July. My second show on the pony was the Royal International. Wow. Um, and the first, show I, it, <laughs> first show I rode it at was the Royal, what used to be the Royal show. Mm. And I qualified for horse year show at that show. <laughs> so the second show was the Royal International. <laughs> about my fifth show was about horse year show. So it was a bit of a baptism of fire. Mm. But, I mean, I had competed like the local agricultural mm. shows mm. before. so It'll get you the bug though, that sort of thing. Yeah, it just... It's like every 10-year-old kid's dream, right? To travel around the country and ride all these beautiful ponies at these big agricultural shows Mm -hmm. and get to go to some amazing, some amazing showgrounds Mm. and amazing shows. You know, we go all over the country Mm. um, and see some amazing, yeah, amazing stuff. So we're very lucky. And it just grew from there. And like any sport, addictive, completely (laughs) addictive. Were you never tempted by like the more extreme horse sports like dressage and eventing? (laughs) Yes, I was. But I soon came to realise that I didn't have enough money to do it to go and buy a fancy horse. So I've always had to make my own. Um, So showings are a lot more accessible for financially for that, for that sort of reasons. Um, And I didn't have the balls to go and gallop into a solid fence. (laughs) However Very, fair. <laughs> Very fair. No, I can do the ones that knock down. Um, I was quite in, into dressage as a kid, but mm. like I say, sort of, it, it's a bit boring, isn't it, when you're nine or ten, like mm-hmm. just going round and round and round in circles. So mm. I went round in the circles for like half an hour and then won a ribbon. So like, <laughs> when you put it like that, that is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> much better. Rather than constantly getting stuck on 66%. Yeah. 6.5, 6.5, 6.5. Yeah. yeah so dull, isn't That's it? That's my life. <laughs> That's my life. There are so many different like areas to showing that you can go into. What drew you to Mountain of Moorlands? Um, I just was very lucky. I had some, I had some plastic ponies and I had some very good Mountain of Moorland ponies. Um, and I like when I was when I was younger and I still do now I really enjoy doing the workers mm. and um as as the you know with a with an M&M you can plait them up and do the workers yeah. the plaited ones as well so therefore you got you know you go to yeah. a south of England for example you yeah. could do the two classes instead of just if you had a plaster bone you could do one yeah dull <laughs> and then as as I grew up um and, and got older you know luckily I'm not that tall and I'm not that fat yet <laughs> so I could ride the, the little ponies yeah. and there's no age limit on Mountain of Moorland ponies so it, it was more appealing than riding yeah. platter ponies because you mm. had to keep moving you had to keep moving on and wherefore you know when I was sort of 14 or 15 I used to go to the sales and buy a pony for 500 quid and mm-hmm. turn it around and sell it for a bit in the spring and I could yeah. could keep doing yeah. that wherefore obviously you had, other way, with the platters you'd have to keep going up the heights and it's, yeah. it's harder you know yeah um, just passion and then once you get started that was it <laughs> a long slippery slope and couldn't get out of it i mean i keep i'm quite a lot taller than i'm 5'10 and quite a lot heavier than you are and i keep being shoved on ponies because yeah. people keep being like oh you, you'll be fine it'll cope and i'm like really yeah, well, they, 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 they were they were bred to do they were bred to carry adults yeah. you know um you know dartmoor ponies were bred to go across carry adult men across yeah. across dartmoor to the prison so they are built that sort of thing yeah. yeah so trotting around in a 20 meter circle for <laughs> 10 minutes is really not a strain on them physically <laughs> yeah. shouldn't be a strain on them at all if it is then they're probably not a very good breed type so. once yeah once i got to sort of like 15 it was just that's all i wanted Crap. to do yeah. like all day every day like mad <laughs> still mad now i thought i might grow out of it i keep thinking i'm gonna retire off 12 hand ponies literally every year i'm like that's it i'm done with 12 handers i'm not do riding you, them anymore do you not find if you get if you get a 12 hour pony that's looking like it's gonna dump you they're really hard to stay on really hard i know people are like oh little ponies they must no, be easier there's nothing no. to hold on to their ears are like here and their shoulders are there and they're they really drop tough. a shoulder and spin so the ground quick. is there they're so quick they're so cheeky aren't yeah. they? full of character yeah very diplomatic <laughs> full of character, full of character. <laughs> we love them really if i read that on an advert i'd be like nope <laughs> not that one headstrong little monkeys is what they really are <laughs> with their own ideas about life so yeah mm-hmm. it just it just grew from there and then once you like anything once you get sort of into it you're just obsessed yeah mm-hmm. So what do you look for when you're looking for show ponies? What makes a good one? Like anything, um, temperament, star quality, um, presence. Obviously, it, you know, it's a show horse fundamentally, so confirmation is absolutely mm. vital and breed type. You know, mm. ultimately it must have good confirmation and say to you, I am a 
whatever. Right, yeah. mm-hmm. You can't help but look if they have star quality. Mm. You just know it's one of those things that you can't necessarily put your finger on mm. what that magic is, but mm. some of them have it yeah. naturally and some of them don't. But as with every equine discipline, talent is useless without mm. temperament. Yeah. So mm. if they're screwed in the head, then good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get like, is there like a printed list of like, this is the breed type for this, or is it more so there that are, you build your experience? Yeah, with? no, there are guidelines mm. um, to within within the breed type, so yeah. that everybody everybody within the world can read the the general specification. But like anything, it's how you interpret. Yeah, you know, plenty of top lines. Some yeah. people you'd interpret it different to me, as yeah. as would you. So that's where the individual personal preference comes yeah. from and that makes showing really interesting because yeah. no horse is so perfect that every single person in the world agrees yeah but it's also frustrating sometimes because you have what you think is really nice and yeah. the judge doesn't agree but mm-hmm. that's <coughs> when you have a subjective sport mm. that yeah. you ask for you one s- person's opinion you, you sign up for it <laughs> yeah you, you kind of do don't you so yeah. you have to just take the rough with the smooth and hope that you've found what you think you like as long as you take the one that you like home Mm-hmm. Mm. so part of a part of showing other than the judge deciding whether or not they think your horse is pretty enough is <laughs> you have to do your individual show yeah. what makes a good show balance mm. uh, a show that's balanced so that you are not not only balancing in the context of the way that <coughs> the horse is mm-hmm. going in balance but balance if you've done 20 strides a can from one rein you want to try and make it even mm. you know the, the same the same the other way they must go within the breed characteristics and time yeah. so you know you're not going to have a highland as uphill or as expressive maybe as a welsh cob because mm. mm-hmm. God didn't build him yeah. like that, so it, mu- it must resemble the breed type. Mm. But equally, like any like like any equine discipline, it's nice to get on a horse that's balanced yeah. and supple and relaxed over its back and going forward into the contact mm. and it's not mm-hmm. overbent and looking through the bridle and yeah. you know a joy to watch. So yeah. so it's a combi- A good show is a combination of showing all the paces within within the set time and the set space yeah. and showing off the breed characteristics within that. Mm. So, you know, if your pony's got a brilliant trot, trot it lots. lots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it's got a really good canter, make sure you mm. show lots of canter, particularly if it's a breed that maybe wouldn't have such a strong mm. canter, you know, so use yeah. your hi- highlight your good things yeah. as, mm. as in, and that's where the dressage is quite similar. You know, you can, you can use, mm. use, use what is good to your advantage. Yeah. And it must be good to have that kind of freedom of creativity within the oh, show as I well. Cause I, I mean, a dressage test is great, but like you, if you've got a really good canter, you can't just do all of it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> can't such a pain, do like a couple it? of strides of trot and then carry on. I know. It, it is really nice. And, and they, they're quite. We have some Pacific classes, which um, mm. there is a Pacific class that I love. That's just basically freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> do what you like, which is brilliant. But it does allow. It does allow for that, and also little things like in a dressage test, you have to, you know, in the working trot, yeah. excellent salute. Uh, I could trot, and if it had a spook, I could just and it came in style off the track. Out. I could just style it out that I want to go that way and change the rain. Like yeah, I meant to do that. Like, <laughs> you don't realise where it jumps into canter. You go, yeah, I'm wanting canter. What, what an active transition! Yes. <laughs> Look at this uphill transition halfway down the straight. Look, I can canter on the straight line. Didn't really want sure. to. Sure, on the wrong leg. It's got to canter. It's got to canter. No, really don't like that. We get really stuffed at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question that I was interested to ask you. So with the mountain moons, you have to show mm-hmm. them quite naturally. Mm-hmm. So they unplatted, yeah. long yeah. mane, long tail, feathers. Yeah. How do you keep their mane the same length? Because <laughs> <laughs> that time of year that everyone's mane is starting to get rubbed and you're obviously building up to Olympia. Yeah, that's a joyful show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> different ponies, uh, sorry, different breeds you can you can have uh, have different trimming mm-hmm. regular regulations yeah. so obviously if it's a fell or a dales or something oh you know a heavy as breed as like that, as yeah, we need to keep it as long as possible so we have to look after you know look after the quality of the mm. hair and trying to maintain it throughout the year is, is quite tricky um so therefore in something like that we put like a long running plait in them mm. generally um and keep them like that so they don't get too rubbed mm. so they don't get too hot and bits and pieces like that with say the welsh breeds and the connemaras you were allowed to pull those manes so that mm. obviously makes life a lot easier 
things. Yeah. yeah. Um, but still, you know, you have to look after it, but like tails have to be mm-hmm. free and flowing. So I plait all of mine have platter, mm. have a one plait in their tail, just so that when they're in the stable, they don't step back and pull the ends out. Because mm. if they keep pulling the ends of the bottom of the tail out, eventually it gets thin. Mm. Um, so we just keep them all in a plait and it's about manage, managing mm-hmm. them. You know, if you have something that rubs, it makes it a lot trickier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we were talking earlier about oiling manes mm. so that the hair gets softer. Yeah, we, we're, a bit, we're a bit OCD wiriest. on that. So yeah. we keep them quite soft. Um, so obviously lots of mane and tail conditioner. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> and, and just keeping so we don't actually, we don't brush them, yeah. particularly between washing them. So we would wash them and then put conditioner in them and then obviously hood them for a show or mm. whatever and then probably not try not to brush them every don't day don't touch anything yeah no. so just so you don't keep ri- ripping the hair follicles yeah. out and as much as we all love a plastic curry comb they are the worst yeah. for it mm-hmm. they just rip them out like there's no tomorrow mm. you know? well, we were saying in the last podcast the last care podcast I love a, one of those magic brushes yes for if yeah. they've got really thin manes just like yep. go over with that oh Brilliant, I love They're them. They're brilliant, aren't they? I, love, I them. love those magic brushes. I know, I, I keep telling them. Rob, like, can I have some more? Yeah. I mean, we're not sponsored by them, I should point out, but they are just great. Maybe we should ask them. <laughs> Maybe we should. They are so great. They are so good. Yeah. I know, I buy them from Rob Lemire by the, by the ton. Yeah. <laughs> so, so great. So you've started to be involved in, with dressage, mm. um, and that's led to you being the winner of the BD Native Champs at Novice and Elementary. I did, yeah. Um, how has that, what made you start and has it helped you at all in the show ring? Absolutely. I, I've i always, like a lot of show riders, we do compete them sort of unaffiliated dressage because it, it's really good education and at prelim and novice, let's be real, it's walk, trot and canter, you know, which as a show horse... You need to do. <laughs> we kind of, it's kind of essential we can manage to walk, <clears throat> trot and canter. Um in a straight line but um and i've always done it and i won the mps we have a national pony society have a run a little uh, like uh it's not little it's quite big unaffiliated dressage series culminating in the Mm. final and i've won that two or three times now Mm. um and so i'd always done it to that level um but one of the ladies uh that owns one of my ponies uh malview prince consort she she bought a pony she bought him for me with the view that she's not into showing, mm. that she's into dressage, that I did some dressage with him, mm-hmm. um, which kept her interest, yeah. and I could show him, which kept my interest, and mm-hmm. there were other there were other reasons, but part of part of mm. it was that I did it, so I was like, yeah, 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 fine, fine, so, yeah. <laughs> take that box, thought, yeah, oh, okay, fine, I'll <coughs> spark that once a month, no problem, keep yeah. that. <laughs> oh my god, and it just literally grew yeah. from there so i took him out and i did some prelim and whatever and did some mps dressage won quite a bit with that and then did some affiliated and won some didn't win some like got really good scores one day really bad scores the next mm. day i'm thinking how does this literally how does this make sense i don't, I don't understand <laughs> so i went to alice oppenheimer who's a good friend of mine i've known her for years and i was like alice i don't understand like why do i do well sometimes and not other times um Mainly because when I try to do is it novice 22, <laughs> 23, you do the 15 metre circles mm. on each rein. Well, I did the 15 metre circle on one rein. I changed, the, you know, you change the rein, mm. you medium, try to do it the other way. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I did a big circle down that end. So I thought being a show rider, I must make the circle the same <laughs> the other end. <laughs> <laughs> so not only had I messed up the 15 metre circle on one rein, I'd messed it up on the other rein. <laughs> At least just symmetrical. Consistency as a, as a show key. rider, I was thinking, I must make it the same as what it was on that rein, the same on this rein. Mm. Otherwise, the judge will think I haven't made it the same. Mm. Yeah, no, what I did is I did about 23 and a half metres over down there. So now I've balled up this one too. But really, I mean, I took him to to Sparsholt, uh Well, I took him, I, I take, it took him to Sparsholt as a prep for Olympia mm. because he went to Olympia and he's only a four-year-old, oh, which yeah. obviously is a massive... It must feel like being at the bottom of a well, the arena at Olympia, because the arena looks so oh, tiny with all the banks of seats. Absolutely amazing. I can't tell you the really? hype it gives you. It's a, personally, everybody says, oh, what's your favourite show? And I would say, oh, Olympia. Except for right now. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got hairy ponies. I can't go. I'm like, what is that a stupid idea? But it is incredible. The atmosphere mm. is just, especially in the afternoon, yeah. you know, when a place is packed. It yeah. is buzzing. It sends being tingles down your spine like nowhere else in the world it is it is incredible but yeah um consort went to olympia as a four-year-old so i thought oh i'll go do some dressage keep him going over the winter and he ended up going once just to do a prelim 
Um, and Jenny Lawrence and Clark was judging. Mm. So I trot around the outside and I said to my mum, well, this is make or break, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out if he's any good yeah. or not. <laughs> and I trot around my test and did what I thought was all right, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, we did all right. <laughs> Amazing score, so... So that was kind of, and it just built it from there and he he does he's been to the nationals three times at novice level he has he was he won the bd native pony novice and elementary he's qualified for the uh Hartbury winters at elementary wow. level um and i just have fun with him he's done some demos dressage and yeah, cool it's really cool he wants to re won a regional at hickstead how hilarious is that? <laughs> <laughs> he won over the other side of the head as a show horse yeah. at hickstead and then he went back and won on there but he, he's just really cool and so then i made some of my other ones do it because mm. one of them got a little bit ring crafty mm. in his show and was a bit like i know what i'm doing so yeah. i thought well i'll take him to dress up he can do that and one of them got a bit nervous so i made him do that so mm. i play with a few others but not quite like him he's sort of He's the king, but he's the king of my life because <laughs> what pony goes to a four-year-old stands there like, yes, they're all clapping mm -hmm. for me. And, it, and he won Olympia when he was oh, four wow. as well. Um, and then as a six-year-old, he did a deep flexor. Oh. <sighs> so then I was a bit more convinced about doing dressage because I could keep him on a surface, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. where for obviously we show yeah. whatever ground we get, mm. being good or bad. So, um, you know, it was quite, quite key to bringing him back in into it was mm. I was like oh right okay I'll do a bit more dressage because yeah. keep them keep them on that surface and yeah. take it a bit more seriously <laughs> and I occasionally go for Alice and she occasionally kicks my ass <laughs> <laughs> which I need I usually go about three days before a competition she's like uh where are you going now then <laughs> but I only go about three times a year which is definitely not enough but mm. just trying to fit everything in I don't have the right size arena here <laughs> it's it's not non-pacific sized yeah. like 30 by 55 or something you know completely so out of context perfect for jumping then yeah, yeah it's good it's brilliant yeah. it's fine for showing we don't care what size of the arena we have we just yeah. have what we have Trot around. <laughs> Trot yeah. around. i don't have like a dressage saddle i just take him in a show saddle oh, yeah. I hate showing saddles. <laughs> I did, when I Welcome to a piece of leather. <laughs> when I did That's my it. Pony, I did my Pony Club A test and I went down and trained with Cindy Sims. Yeah, I love Cindy. Love her so much. And she's, she's gorgeous. Has done the reason I passed, but every time she gave me a horse to ride and I had a showing saddle, I'd <laughs> die and <inside. laughs> just be like, can I can I have a knee roll? No. No. <laughs> No, okay. we don't like knee rolls. Just show off the shoulder. So uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I considered bringing my saddles down just yeah. so I could put them on and be like, I'm not riding in your horse anymore. <laughs> she'd like put, she'd, you have to jump, you're meant to jump around 110 at an A test. And she'd put the course up and I'd be like, <laughs> on, ne on this wood? <laughs> Plank of wood you put on the horse? And she'd just be like, yeah, if you get... And it teaches you to sit up. It does. <laughs> just... teaches you good core strength. Yeah. For when now they hold on. Put, on a dirty, put in a dirty stuff and mm. you've got nothing to hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's the real reason why show horses are so big. <laughs> yeah, what it something is, we stop. just like something behind the shoulders to sit into. <laughs> yeah. Something to dig your knees into. Mm. And what advice do you have for someone getting started in showing or looking to get started in showing? Watch mm. and learn. And ask, like anything, in any, just go and ask the people that you are interested in or admire or watch or are successful um, and watch them, ask them. I still do that now. I, yeah. I at Horsey Show, we work for, um, we have compet we have ponies competing on two days and the next two days are platted days. Mm -hmm. And I go and work for another big professional yard because you never stop learning. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, I do I do platter horses but i and i go off one day one day in the spring i'll go to a professional yard it doesn't always be a showing yard just a professional mm. yard somebody that i'm i just pluck up the courage to send them a facebook message saying <laughs> would it be possible for me just to come and watch for the day and, and like, they're like Jane. free labor yep <laughs> yeah, and generally they say yeah and i've been some amazing places yeah. so it, i still go and watch and learn mm. and mm -hmm. and and try to get better What's been oh, your favourite place to go? Like, where's been your... I was your really place? lucky to go to Jane Ross's. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, which was amazing. Um, and I was even more lucky that she let me ride some incredible horses as well oh, really when cool. I was there. Yeah. So it was really, really interesting. Um, you know, because, yes, it's all in showing, but mm. she has to put she, right, ride judges on hers. Yeah. Luckily, mm -hmm. you don't have to do it for us. Yeah. Um, so I've been some really... been very lucky. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really interesting it makes you keeps your horizons open because 
I work here by myself yeah. all day, every day, which is which is good, but you can get very stuck in your yeah. own ways and stuck in your own ruts and yeah. you mustn't you mustn't stop wanting to improve because yeah. as we all know with horses you can always get better. There's always yeah. something to learn and, and there are a hundred ways to skin a cat. We yeah. we all do the same job but just in our own unique yeah. ways and if you just learn one thing from one person then yeah. it was it might come in handy yeah. one day. We've been collecting like um life hacks for working on yards. What's your favourite like grooming life hack that you've learned? Other than coconut oil and the mains, because we've already had that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My life hack for, gr- for grooming. Yeah. Mm, yeah, probably I, I not. I feel like we can't have a showing person without some... <laughs> how do I make my horse that shiny? <laughs> Anything. Uh, yeah. mm. How do you keep, you know, the feathers nice in the winter? Or uh, <laughs> If they have feathers, we use pig oil. Yeah. I get pig oil, put it into a bottle and spray it onto them. It keeps them really soft. Mm. Um, and, oh... Probably good feeding is yeah. like anything. It yeah. comes, the shine comes from within. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we all like a bit of shine, don't we? So <laughs> probably a sheepskin cloth Yeah. Um, and some baby oil. Mm. And hot baby, hot oil, oil. Hot oil and oh, hot they baby look, oil. When and... they've just been hot clothed or something, oh, they yeah, look bit so of, good. Yeah. They do look amazing. Yeah. Or oh, a bit of vinegar. If you wash them, mm. a bit of vinegar in and get then the grease like, get the grease yeah. off. Get an old tea towel and like, scrub them in little circles <laughs> yeah. and it bring all the dirt quite satisfying it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a bit sad isn't it yeah. we used to do it yeah. just after after they've been clipped after being clipped you'd um nice. we my mum always had liquid paraffin yeah paraffin yeah Ooh. we don't do it anymore i do <laughs> well, my, i can't be bothered anymore i do like but. warm water and a few drops of hippie scrub mm. oh i can't beat hippie scrub hippie mm. scrub on everything Really? Mm. Hippie scrub. I, I, I am a bit obsessed with hippie scrub. <laughs> <laughs> what does it do? Oh, it's pissing. got a cart. Let's give it a hippie scrub. <laughs> yeah. oh. Or magic cream, because mm. we can't live without magic cream. And hippie uh, scrub and Vaseline. We can't use that because FEI. Yeah. We do, do but like <laughs> No, I don't use Sudacrim. Oh, not Sudacrim. Because we, we have to compete under FEI rules. Oh, really? I yeah, thought so Sudacrim sometimes, was all right. And not other times, no, we're not allowed to use Sudacrim. Uh, I read Sudacrim was all right now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You have to compete under <laughs> FEI rules, but showing's not an FEI discipline. Correct. But we compete at some shows like Royal Windsor and Olympia that compete that run ah. under FEI rules. Royal Windsor is my favourite event. Everybody my loves to go to a Royal Windsor, don't we? Um, I mean, I've never competed there, but we. my dad is a founder member. We go every year. Oh, yeah. It's my favourite place, mm-hmm. just because when we were little, we just... My... It's a tradition. Yeah. And it, my... Everybody down, down south, it's yeah. a tradition. You um, go to a Royal Windsor or show. My, and my parents would get there and be like, off you go. And we'd yeah. just... I've competed Go. there every year since 1995. Wow. I've been going every year since 1995. My sister got to go this year and compete. Yeah. Um, because she's got my first pony and he's now 25. Oh, in the and veterans? In the veterans, yes. They're so popular, aren't they? Yeah, she they managed. Mad. But it's her first year doing showing. Yeah. And she managed to qualify for Windsor. Cool. And she came, I think, fourth. Wicked job. Um, and this is my ex-endurance pony. And she really like, found but, a new niche in yeah, life. Exactly. exactly. But she knew nothing and she was going around asking everyone, like, I've got to do a show and what should I, do I have to take, what do I have to do for the untacking? Like, what do I have to take in? <laughs> yeah, must have and, been. But it's the got worst part right was, <laughs> wrong me. the worst part was that they had that hor- all that rain this year. Mm. He's grey. Oh, like, fun. Properly grey. Oh, and so yeah, mum was tearing her hair out. She got them all beautiful and they had to walk to the ring and it was like knee deep mud. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It was like, they Fun. always make me laugh though because you see like there's all this kind of show jumpers who are being quite practical about life and then you see these ponies that are honest to god hoof to ears wrapped. Yes. Completely. Yes. And with these children who are similarly wrapped <laughs> up, <laughs> and they've all kind of they're all straight limbed. Yes. <laughs> no no like nothing no. can breathe. <laughs> all there is is like two little eyes. Is the <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> I yeah. think it's the best thing every time. And then children everything. all with pigtails. All pigtails. Yeah. Everything. I've yeah. never seen I've not seen anyone with pigtails anywhere in the, the real world. I was gonna say <laughs> outside of a show, do you ever see kids wearing them? <laughs> no. All let's put them in pigtails, they look cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or let's put them in door knockers, they look even cuter. Yeah. Yeah. Like they wore armor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, luckily I don't I try to avoid children. My mum tried possible. showing with me when I was little and um she, she said she gave up when we were I, there was I was at like our little pony club show and we had two lines of ponies for 
don't know, Hansmith Gelding or whatever we were doing. And me and my friend got bored in the back row. So we were dropping <laughs> our whips, jumping off to get them and then getting back on. Because it was more interesting than waiting. But after time number 10 of throwing our whip further away <laughs> and just abandoning the pony going to get it, mum was like, showing's not for her. <laughs> you learn patience. People often say that. Oh, oh how do you get through? Like, it's, you have to stand around for so long. But not really. It goes mm. quite quickly. Yeah. We'll you talk to, to your friend next door. You yeah. get used, like, any, like anything, getting used to it. I can't, still can't get my head around dressage. Like, how can somebody... I, I like... I'm a very visual person, so I like to see. Mm -hmm. But I can't see the person that's won. Yeah. Because I don't know when their test was. Yeah. I don't even know what they look like. I don't even know what their horse was like. <laughs> like how can I see? Like, why did they beat me? Like, probably because I did the wrong size circle. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's quite, it's quite it's a regular occurrence. Technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Alice gets irate with me. <laughs> she calls it, like, I call it circle trotting. And she calls showing follow my leader. <laughs> I like that. Just, a lot. <laughs> you see my Facebook account whenever whenever I do either. She always takes a piss out. Of me. <laughs> so good. It's true. Do you know? I had that because I decided a couple of years ago that I was like, right, I need to sort my dressage out. Like I've got to intermediate. Like I probably should have some lessons. I don't really have lessons. It's probably not very good. And I got someone to come in and I showed her my previous test and she was like, "Are you trying to do medium trot?" <laughs> I was like, "Yes." And she's like, "Show me some shoulder in." And I was like, and she's like. Oh. <laughs> and like a lot of the lesson was kind of like, how right. have you got this far and you're getting those scores and your horse can't really do the movements? <laughs> I was told when I got my horse to intermediate, I had a lesson and I was told that I needed to stop faking it for her because we do a shoulder in and my body position would be like, this is a perfect shoulder in yeah. and she'd be effectively straight but with a good neck bend. So she was like, I mean, it looks like it looks like there's something slightly wrong but i can't put my finger on what it is and now i've watched you it is that you're not doing the movement <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun lesson it's a bit like alice she's like what were you trying to do <laughs> what and i was like trying to achieve? no no i was just trying to circle i was just trying to circle. <laughs> meant, she's meant like to do this but that's supposed to be leg yielding i was like no that's no, just trotting sideways across to that marker over a there diagonal line <laughs> yeah <laughs> have a show rider i go in straight lines so, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. so move on to the questions that we ask everyone mm. now so the first one is what's one thing you couldn't live without chocolate Oh, I like that answer. That was we we were at Hoy's and I was watching. I mean, you might have been in the lineup actually. We were watching the lineup of the Mountain and Moorlands, and Probably. one of the one of the There's riders glasses. one of the riders gets a chocolate out and like hands it to the neighbour, and I was like, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> this is right. Yeah, I and the number of people that have polos in their pockets. Yeah, polos. I, I buy them by Sweet. the box load. Yeah, yeah, but I buy Fridays by the box. Mm. I love live okay. by Freddo's oh, yeah Freddo's and Nutella <laughs> but I can't look at Nutella in my pocket so it's not very helpful no. but Freddo's are perfect nice and flat yeah, yeah bite perfect. size ready to go yeah just the job um yeah. probably that or a uh, timetable <laughs> I'm really bad I love, I love a good timetable or a list yeah my lot go mad at me I'm like, oh no mm. we need to have a timetable which is the only good thing because stress arch actually like Runs suits my life yeah. to, because runs because to it runs to timetables. Yeah, showing doesn't. Showing doesn't have a timetable. <laughs> no, it's just a bit more like free. When the class of four finishes, our one will start. <laughs> That's it. But show jumpers do that as well. And that stresses me out because they're like, oh, the yeah. class will start at probably this time, and I'm like, but when when will I be in there? Why I need my times for it. And yeah, then... but at least they're now doing pre entries, so they yeah. give you like rough times, or they'll give you time sometimes. Yeah. Showing? No. <laughs> we do with some shows. Some. Like, hoys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we're in the ring the at big like ones. <laughs> 7 yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> Yay. Super fun. That's really great. Um, no, we do we do it some of the, the bigger ones. But other than that, no, it's just follow on. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's hard because, because some judges like a freestyle show. So therefore, mm. they might run faster or slower. And some judges like a set show. So... And also our entries close a thousand years in advance. So, <laughs> so the amount that enter and the amount that go forward aren't necessarily the same. <laughs> At least you assume that the ponies are on the list of the same ponies that... Yeah. <laughs> but I have to enter ponies sometimes that I haven't even broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, that gives you a real time scale to work. <laughs> I 
enter stuff in south of England and and the, and that closes the first the first of April and I'm like hmm I don't think I've sat on this one yet. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll enter it anyway. Yeah, we'll see, okay. <laughs> see how we go. Lincoln's the worst, actually. That's always really bad. I love Lincoln shows, so I always like enter way too many. Mm. It's really expensive as well, so I really need not to do it. <laughs> and he's like, do you have to enter that show? I was like, yep. yes. yes. Um, it's never been in the ring, but it'll be fine by Lincoln. <laughs> What's one thing you wish you'd learned sooner? To be better. Yeah, just <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I just, I just like everybody. You, you want to be better. Mm-hmm. You want to learn more. You want to know more. You want, you want, you don't. You you want to be better tomorrow than you were today, and you want to always striving to to try and and to do a better job because there's not not only riding but in management, looking after them, mm-hmm. um, every, every aspect of everything. But I'm. Like I say, I'm kind of self-governed because mm. I'm self-employed. Um, but I always want to be better. So probably probably being better. And and when you know, when I was younger, I was all about, like a lot of the young people, you know, I've got to be successful. But mm. as you get older, you just realise that success is probably... Well, Lucinda Green once said, didn't she? Success is a destination, not a journey. No, the other way around. Journey, not a destination. That's it. Yeah. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Success is a journey, not a destination. That's and I probably right. always thought, that, oh, once I've won this, or once I've won that, yeah. or once I've won always oh, ten times, then I'll be successful. But <laughs> it's a lot more effort. <laughs> <laughs> You're still the same person. Still, mm-hmm. like, still manage to get on some days and realise that your reins are crossed, or <laughs> still smack yourself in the face with a gr- with a girl. You know, I've done that doing a doing a nose band. Down. Doing yep. a nose band when it's just being cleaned with like slightly greasy gloves. Yeah. Straight, straight in the face. Just yep. punch yourself in the straight. Oh. Yes. Still fall off breakers. Oh, just the same. Even yeah. if you Yeah, they don't care. They, <laughs> they, don't care what you've oh, they won. love to make me grounded those ones. They don't care what you've won. <laughs> Lendia them. So um, yeah, prob- probably probably that that, you know, it, it's about it's about hard work, yeah. self satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Do you, the last question is, do you think talent is real and how much of a bearing do you think it has on an individual's success within the sport? Absolutely, I think talent is, is very real. Um, how much, it has a lot, like, mm. like I said earlier, talent is useless without temperament, yeah. both in equine and human form. Mm. Um, we've all met people that are incredibly talented but don't work hard and we've all met people that aren't very talented but work there. Mm absolute hardest um <laughs> keep your head down and, and keep yeah. grounded and they become successful because they've worked because they've worked yeah. at it um and in equine form definitely in our game i mean our game's 50 50 performance confirmation so therefore if you have a pony that is beautiful or what you perceive mm. as beautiful you are significantly better than something that isn't confirmationally mm. maybe as good but it doesn't mean that something um doesn't have star quality mm. and doesn't you know t- talent for us is it's trainability mm-hmm. isn't it i'd rather have a pony that perhaps wasn't quite as beautiful but had a better temperament mm. and more trainable attitude than than a, than a beautiful pony mm. and i'd be cocky enough to say i've had both mm. um and getting one that's a mix of everything obviously is <laughs> the perfect confirmation <laughs> and the best brain you can find is Makes my life a joy, but they don't live here. <laughs> the retards live here. They usually live here because they're a little bit jiggy or a little bit naughty or a little bit green or they're completely green at all, not even broken. My ponies for next year are not even broken yet. Um, you know, so, or, or because they break down, they live here. The owners have had enough of them. They don't want to look at them. <laughs> so they're just out of sight, out of mind. You have it, Sam. See if you can get it sound. Um, you know, That's so. That's nice. <laughs> such a joy. I love those ones. <laughs> they do actually, to be fair, I'm really lucky. I have a really good team of mm. physio and vets and people that look after them, put them back together. Which doctors? <laughs> Anything. Everything. I have Googled the most random things i've had ice packs in my freezers yeah. you name it i've i've had it everything's worth a try if you try it once at least you've at least you've tried yeah they're really depressing those ones um because it, it, some horses are just not built 
yeah. not built for it or they have a, they have an injury and you just can't overcome it yeah. but going back uh, talent talent's absolutely i do 100 percent believe in it both like mm. say both in equine and in, and in human form but it, it's nothing without temperament mm. you know yeah. we've all met be like amazing people but if they don't work hard then yeah. an opportunity it's yeah. getting the right opportunity yeah both equine and human you know we we've all seen beautiful horses or horses are very talented but mm. maybe not in the right hands yeah. and you think oh if only mm-hmm. you know um and the same with people you know if, if only that kid had been given the opportunity mm. to ride something really good or given the opportunity to compete at that level then what or trained a bit more you know what opportunities could have then come from that yeah. so it's about it all coming together isn't it mm. at the same time but trainability is hugely important the main thing mm-hmm. yeah mm. Oh, well, thank you very much for talking to us. Sorry to bore you. No, no, it's been really interesting. We don't know a lot about your discipline, so... <laughs> Nor do I, to be honest. <laughs> I've been doing it for 20 years, I still haven't got much of a clue. <laughs> um, if people want to find out more about you and what you do, um, where can they find you? They can find me at most shows, most weekends. Um, <laughs> no, I have a... Don't ins- try ringing, because there's no signal here. <laughs> no, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> um, I have an Instagram account, but I'm not very good at it i'm trying trying to get better uh so i have an instagram account and it's um roberts native show team or i have a facebook page which is sam roberts mm. um so you can find me on find me on there or, or at most of the shows yeah. drop me a message drop me a message i i reply to l- more more messages oh what about my pony i don't know anything about showing but can you give me mm. some tips i get loads of them so oh that's try, so nice try to get back to as everybody yeah. might not be instant but i try to because yeah. somebody helped me along the line you know I've, yeah. I've many a time asked for people could you just what do you think yeah can you just help me yeah and people have been give, kind enough to give up their time to help me so and i do teach-ins and clinics and yeah. bits and pieces like that so oh, right. awesome. try to try to put back into the sport what i take out and a yeah. judge as well yeah. cool. she probably doesn't make people very happy <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys have enjoyed this episode then you know what you might like is our other episodes <laughs> as well which I will continue to plug at the end of every episode that we record so if, the more you listen the less I'll do it um, and if you want to follow what we're doing we are at uh, at the pony podcast on instagram the pony podcast on facebook and if you want to request any episodes because we do request this was a requested episode this was Someone a request about showing so genuine I've answered their questions <laughs> genuine proof right here that we do requested episodes you can email the ponypod at gmail.com or you can just dm us on anything and we're always there because we're millennials and we're always on our phones <laughs> <laughs> okay all right. Oh, and like, rate, and review. Review. Yeah, that's what. That's it. Like, rate, and review. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.